Blessed is our God, always, now, and forever, and to the ages of ages. Glory to you, our God, glory to you, heavenly King, comforter, spirit of truth, present in all places and filling all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come, take your abode in us, cleanse us of every stain, and save our souls, O good one. Amen. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, forgive our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Grant victory to the Orthodox over their adversaries and guard your commonwealth with your cross. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are lifted up upon the cross of your own will, Christ our God. Grant your mercy upon the people that bear your name. And your strength may glad the Orthodox, giving them victory over their adversaries. May they have your alliance as a weapon of peace and an invincible trophy. Now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. O awesome and ever-present protection, do not overlook, O gracious one, our supplications. Most praise Theotokos, establish the Orthodox people. Save those whom you've called to govern, and grant them victory from above. For you, blessed one, have given birth to God. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for pious Orthodox Christians. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our Archbishop Nathaniel. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For you are a merciful and loving God, and to you we offer glory. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. In the name of the Lord, Father, give the blessing. Glory to the holy, consubstantial, life-giving, and undivided Trinity, always, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to all people. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to all people. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to all people. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. O Lord, why are they who afflict me multiplied? Many rise up against me. Many say to my soul, there is no salvation for him and his God. But you, O Lord, are my helper, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy mountain. I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord has protected me. I will not be afraid of 10,000 people who have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, my God. For you have struck all who without cause are my enemies. You have broken the teeth of sinners. Salvation belongs to the Lord, and your blessing is upon your people. I have laid down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord has protected me. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor chasten me in your wrath. For your arrows are fixed in me. You have pressed your hand heavily upon me. There is no help in my flesh in the face of your wrath. There is no peace in my bones in the face of my sins. For my transgressions have risen higher than my head. They have pressed heavily upon me as a heavy burden. My bruises have become noisome and corrupt in the face of my foolishness. I have been wretched and bowed down utterly until the end. All day long I went with downcast face. For my soul is filled with mockiness and there is no help in my flesh. I have been afflicted and I have been greatly humbled. I have roared from the groaning of my heart. But, O Lord, all my desires before you, and my groaning is not hidden from you. My heart is troubled, my strength has failed me, and the light of my eyes is not with me. My friends and my neighbors drew up against me and stood still, and my nearest relatives stood far off. And they who sought my soul used violence, and they who sought evil for me spoke vain things, and they meditated craftiness all day long. But as for me, like a deaf man, I heard them not, and I was a speechless man who opened not his mouth. And I became a man who hears not and has no reproofs in his mouth. For I have hoped in you, O Lord. You will listen to me, O Lord, my God. For I said, Never let my enemies rejoice over me. Yes, when my feet were shaken, those men spoke boastful words against me. I am ready for scourges, and my sorrow is continually before me. 
for I will declare my iniquity and be distressed for my sins. But my enemies live and are mightier than I, and they who hated me unjustly are multiplied. They who render me evil for good have slighted me because I followed righteousness. Do not forsake me, O Lord my God. Do not depart from me. Be attentive to my help, O Lord of my salvation. Do not forsake me, Lord my God. Be not far from me. Make haste to help me, Lord of my salvation. O God, my God, early at dawn I rise to you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a barren, untrodden, and unwatered land. So I have appeared before you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your mercy is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I shall bless you while I live, and I will lift up my hands in your name. Let my soul be filled with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you at dawn, for you have become my helper. I shall rejoice in the shelter of your wings. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand has been quick to help me. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall be praised. But the mouths of those who speak lies shall be stopped. I meditate on you at dawn, for you have become my helper. I shall rejoice in the shelter of your wings. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand has been quick to help me. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. O Lord, God of my salvation, I have cried out day and night before you. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry. For my soul is filled with evil, and my life draws near to Hades. I am counted with those who go down into the pit. I am like a man without help, adrift among the dead, like the bodies of the slain who sleep in the grave, whom you remember no more, and are cut off from your hand. They have laid me in the lowest pit in darkness and the shadow of death. Your wrath lies heavy upon me. You have afflicted me with all your waves. You have made me an abomination to them. I am shut up, and I cannot get out. My eyes have grown weak from poverty. I have cried to you, Lord, the entire day. I have stretched out my hands to you. Will you work wonders for the dead, or shall physicians raise them up so that they might thank you? Shall any in the grave speak of your mercy and your truth in the place of destruction? Shall your wonders be known in the dark, and your righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But as for me, I have cried out to you, Lord, and in the morning my prayer shall come before you. Lord, why do you cast off my soul and turn away from me? I am a poor man and in trouble. From my youth, having been exalted, I was humbled and brought to distress. Your fierce wrath has gone over me, and your terrors have solely troubled me. They came around me all day long like water, they engulfed me altogether. You have put far away from me friend and neighbor and my acquaintances because of my misery. O Lord, God of my salvation, I have cried out day and night before you. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry. Bless the Lord, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, and forget not all he has done for you. He forgives all your iniquities. He he heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from corruption. He crowns you with mercy and compassion. He satisfies your desire with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle's. The Lord performs deeds of mercy and justice for all who are wronged. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our iniquities, nor has he rewarded us according to our sins. For as heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our iniquities from us. As a father has compassion upon his son, so has the Lord compassion upon those who fear him. For he knows what we are made of, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, as a flower of the field, so shall the blossom. For the wind passes over it, then it shall be gone, and its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from eternity to eternity upon those who fear him, and his righteousness is upon sons of sons, upon those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all of his angels who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, who minister of his, who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, my soul. In all places of his dominion, bless the Lord, my soul. Lord, hear my prayer, in your truth give ear to my supplications, and righteousness hear me, and enter not into judgment with your servant, for no one living is justified in your sight. For the enemy has pursued my soul, he has crushed my life to the ground, he has made me dwell in darkness like those who have long been dead, and my spirit is overwhelmed within me, my heart within me is distressed. I remembered the days of old, I meditated on all your works, I pondered on the work of your hands, I spread out my hands to you, my soul longs for you like a thirsty land. Lord, hear me quickly, my spirit fails. Turn not your face away from me, lest it be like those who go down into the pit. Let me to hear your mercy in the morning, for in you have I put my trust. Lord, teach me to know the way in which I shall walk, for I lift up my soul to you. 
Rescue me, Lord, from my enemies. To you have I fled for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your good spirit shall lead me on a level path. Lord, for your name's sake, you shall preserve my life. In your righteousness, you shall bring my soul out of trouble. And in your mercy, you shall utterly destroy my enemies. And you shall destroy all those who afflict my soul, for I am your servant. Hear me, O Lord, in your righteousness, and enter not into judgment with your servant. Hear me, O Lord, in your righteousness, and enter not into judgment with your servant. Your good spirit shall lead me on a level path. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dos Dios. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, O God. Our hope, O Lord, glory to you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of God and the salvation of our soul, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, the stability of the Holy Church as of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Orthodox Christians, let us pray to the Lord. For our Archbishop Nathaniel, the Honorable Presbytery, the Diaconate in Christ, all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. For our country, the President, all those in public service and the armed forces everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. For this city and parish, every city and land, and the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel by land, sea, and air, the sick, the suffering, the captives, and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, Lord. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Theos Kyrios kapaponarimin evlogimaros oerhomenos anonomati Kyrios. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon His holy name. God is the Lord and has revealed Himself to us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. All the nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I defended myself against them. God is the Lord, and he revealed himself to us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This has been done of the Lord, and it is wonderful in our eyes. God is the Lord, and has revealed himself to us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Although your tomb was sealed with a stone, O Savior, and your most pure body was guarded by the soldiers. You rose on the third day, giving life to all the world. Therefore, O giver of life, the powers of heaven praise you. Glory to your resurrection, O Christ. Glory to your kingdom. Glory to your saving wisdom, O only lover of mankind. 
Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In in you all mother is preserved and distorted what was made in the image of God. For taking up the cross you follow Christ and by example taught that we should overlook the flesh since it passes away and instead look after the soul since it is immortal. And therefore, O devout the lucky eye, your spirit rejoices with the angels. Both now and ever to the ages of ages, amen. You were born of a virgin, and you endured crucifixion for us, O good Lord. By your death, you divested the death of spoils, and you display the resurrection as God. Please do not despise us, the work of your hand. Demonstrate your loving kindness, O oh merciful Master. Defer to your mother the Theotokos when she intercedes on our behalf and save us, your people, in despair, O Savior. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and Ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life. To Christ our God. To you, o Lord. For yours is the dominion, and yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. The soldiers who were guard in your tomb became like dead men. O Savior, when your angel appeared there like lightning and said to the women that you had risen as you had said, we now worship you, our only God, and extol you. For you conquered death and dissolution, no master, and rose from the sepulchre. Now and ever into the glory to the now and ever into the ages of ages. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. O merciful Lord, nailed to the cross of your own will. O giver of life, laid in a tomb as a mortal. By death you destroyed the power of death as the mighty one. For the doorkeepers of Hades quaked when they saw you with yourself you raise those who were long dead O Savior supremely benevolent now and ever into the ages of ages amen when Gabriel had said to you rejoice O blessed virgin and you had voiced your ascent the Lord of all became incarnate in you who became the holy ark of righteous king david said of old you carried your creator and thus your womb was wider than the heavens glory to him who dwelt inside of you glory to him who came forth from you glory to him who through your childbirth has set us free the women were at the tomb early in the morning. 
When they saw a vision of angels trembling came upon them, the sepulchre was radiating life, and the dazzling marvel astonished them. They departed and ran to proclaim the resurrection to the disciples. Christ, the only strong and mighty Lord, has divested Hades of its spoils. He has freed from the dead from fear of condemnation by the power of the cross and raise them all with himself. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, O life of all and immortal, Lord, you were nailed upon the cross. O Savior, you were numbered among the mortal dead. O giver of life, you rose after three days and raised Adam from corruption. The heavenly powers cry aloud to you, Glory to your sufferings, glory to your resurrection, glory to your condescension, all-loving one. Both now and ever, into the ages of ages, amen. O Mary, who walk us, body us, it the Master, we pray, we pray you raise us up, for we are sunk in the darkness of dreadful despondency, of transgressions and suffering. O Lady, you indeed are the salvation of sinners. You give help to us, you are our mighty protection, and you save us, your servants. Hevlo hito sikiri hadi taxon meta dike omagasu. The company of angels was amazing. You who numbered among the dead, O Savior, who destroyed the power of death and raised up Adam with yourself, setting all free from hell. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Why mingle spices with tears of pity, O women disciples? Cried the resplendent angel from within the tomb to the myrrh-bearing women. Behold the tomb and understand, for the Savior has risen from the grave. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. The myrrh-bearing women hastened early in the morning to your tomb lamenting. But the angel arose before them and said, The time for lamentation has ceased. Weep not, but tell the apostles of the resurrection. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. The myrrh-bearing women came to your tomb, O Savior. But they heard an angel say to them, Why can't the living one among the dead? For as God, he has risen from the tomb. And to weave you have brought joy in the place of sorrow. He who took flesh from you, who is both God and man, has raised up those who had fallen from life. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 doxa si o theotheos. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, glory to you, O God. Again and again in peace. 
peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. For blessed is your name and glorified is your the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. The repentance of the thief gained him paradise. The lamentation of the myrrh-bearing women proclaimed the glad tidings that you are risen and have bestowed upon the world your great mercy, O Christ. I cry to you, O Lord, in my sorrow, hear my pain. My ending is the sacred desire for a guide among those in the desert, for they are far removed from this day. Now and always and forever and ever, amen. Glory and honor to the Holy Spirit, as also to the Son and the Father. Let us therefore praise the Trinity, mighty and one in dominion. You have elevated me unto the heights of your commandments, O God. Let virtue shine upon me, that I may praise you. With your right hand, O Logos, keep me and protect me, that the fire of sin not consume me. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now and always, and forever, and ever. Amen. All creation is renewed through the Holy Spirit, and returns to its original state. For he is equal in power with the Father and the Logos. My soul does rejoice with those who say, Let us go into the courts of the Lord. My spirit is renewed and my heart is glad. Great fear shall be in the house of David, where the throne shall be set. And all the tribes and tongues of the earth shall be judged. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Both now and ever to the ages of ages. Amen. It is proper to offer honor, worship, and might, and glory to the Holy Spirit, as also to the Father and to the Son, for the Trinity is one only in nature and not in person. <laughs> Now will I rise, said the Lord, I will place them in safety, I will speak of it openly. The words of the Lord are sacred words. Now will I arise, said the Lord, I will place them in safety, I will speak of it openly. As God, you rose from the grave and raised the world with you. As God, all the universe sings your praise. Death has vanished, Adam rejoices, and Eve, now loose from bondage, exalts you, saying, You, O Christ, grant resurrection to all. You, O Christ, grant resurrection to all. Let us extol as omnipotent, omnipotent God the one who rose on the third day, for he smashed the gates of Hades, and he raised from their graves the dead from all time, as he wished he has seen by the myrrh-bearing women, to whom first he exclaimed, Rejoice, thus saying, declaring to the apostles the joy as the only giver of life. Then the women in good faith bring good news of the proof of the victory to the disciples, but Hades groans and death laments. The world exults and everyone celebrates. O Christ, for you have granted resurrection to all. O Christ, for you have granted resurrection to all. On this, the eighth day of the month, we commemorate our venerable mother, Pelagia. 
on this day to the memory of the holy Taisia the harlot. Through their holy intercessions, O God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. I shall open my mouth and it shall be filled with the Spirit. And I shall sing praises to the Mother and Queen. And I shall be seen in radiant celebration, joyfully singing of all her wonders. May all talk us, living and bountiful fountain, strengthen the spiritual fellowship of those gathered who praise you in your divine glory. Deem them worthy of crowns of glory. The prophet Habakkuk, comprehending the unfathomable divine will, that you to the Most High, became incarnate of a virgin and cried out, Glory to your might, O Lord. The whole universe stood in amazement before your divine glory, for you a virgin without knowing wedlock, have in your womb the God of all and gave birth to a son who existed before all time, rewarding all who praise you with his salvation. Come clap your hands, O godly people, as you celebrate this sacred and most honorable great feast of the Mother of God. Glorify God who was born of her. The godly did not worship creation above the Creator, but bravely overcame the threat of fire and rejoicing. Blessed are you who had most praise, Lord God of our Father. The pious youths were preserved from the furnace by the child of the Theotokos, then prefigured in image. Now in reality, he brings together the whole universe to sing. Praise the Lord, all you his works, and exalt him forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For you are holy, our God, who rests among the saints. And to you we offer glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Everything that breathes. Let us pray to the Lord our God that we may be made worthy to hear the Holy Gospel. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all and with your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. At that time, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. But Peter then came out with the other disciple, and they went toward the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying, 
in the napkin which had been on his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and your holy resurrection we praise and glorify. For you are our God, we know no other. It is your name we invoke. Come, all you faithful, let us worship Christ's holy resurrection. For behold, through the cross, joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For in enduring the cross for us, he destroyed death by death. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your great mercy, and according to the multitude of your compassion, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my iniquity and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and victorious when you are judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquity, and in sin my mother bore me. You shall sprinkle me with piss of mesh, I shall be made clean. You shall wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the afflicted bones may rejoice. Turn your face away from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Cast me, create, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and establish me with your governing spirit. I shall teach transgressors your ways, and the ungodly shall turn back to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, the God of my salvation. My tongue shall joyfully declare your righteousness. For if you had desired sacrifice, I would give it. You do not delight in whole burnt offering. A sacrifice to God is a broken spirit. God will not despise a broken and humbled heart. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion, and let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Then they shall be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with oblation and whole burnt offering. And they shall offer bulls on your altar. And have mercy on me, O God. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit through the intercessions of the apostles. O merciful one, remit the multitude of our sins. Now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O merciful one, remit the multitude of our sins. Κατά το μεγαλεό σου και κατά το πλήθο των εκτιμών σου, εξάνυψον το νόμιμα μου. Αναστά, ο Ισού από του τάφου καθώ προείπαν, εδώ και μην. Την αιώνιον ζωήν και μεγαλεό O God, save your people and bless your inheritance. Look upon your world with mercy and compassion. Raise the Orthodox Christians in glory and send down upon us your rich mercies. 
Through the intercessions of our most pure Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, the power of the precious and life giving cross, the protection of the honorable heavenly bodiless powers, the supplications of the honorable glorious prophet and forerunner John the Baptist, the holy glorious and praiseworthy apostles, our fathers among the saints, the great hierarchs and ecumenical teachers, Basil the Great, Gregory the Theologian, and John Chrysostom. Athanasius, Cyril, and John, the merciful patriarchs of Alexandria, Nicholas, Bishop of Myra, Spiridon, Bishop of Trinithus, Nectarius of Pentapolis, the wonder workers, the holy, glorious, great martyrs, George, the trophy bearer, Demetrius, the merce dreaming, Theodore, the soldier, Theodore, the general, Minas, the wonder worker, Charalambos, and Eleftherios, the holy, hiero martyrs, the holy, glorious, and victorious martyrs, the glorious, great martyr, and all laudable Ephemia, the holy and glorious martyrs, Tecla, Varvara, Anastasia, Caterini, Kiriaki, Fortini, Marina, Paraschivi, and Irini, of our venerable and God-bearing fathers, <clears throat> the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and our devout mother, Pelagia, whose memory we observe, and all your saints. We beseech you only, most merciful Lord, hear us sinners who pray to you, and have mercy on us. Through the mercy, compassion, and love of mankind, of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all-holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us honor and magnify in song the Theotokos and Mother of the Light. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. More honored than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. You without corruption gave birth to God the Word. You are truly Theotokos, we magnify you. Because he has regarded the humility of his handmaid, behold, henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Tinti me, O Teran, don't cherubim, Teran, dogs, O Teran, as in gritos, don't seraphim, Tina di Atoros, Teonogon, Te Cusan, Tinondos, Teoto, con se, Megalino. Because he who is mighty has done me great things, and holy is his name, and his mercy is from generation to generation to those who fear him, more honored than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim, you without corruption gave birth to God the word, you are truly Theotokos, we magnify you. He has shown might in his art, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of the heart, more honored than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. You with the corruption gave birth to God the word. You were truly the autophagus, we magnify you. He has taken down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. More honored than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Of him. You without corruption gave birth to God the word. You are truly Theotokos, we magnify you. He has aided Israel, his servant, being mindful of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. More honored than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. You without corruption gave birth to God the word. You are truly let every mortal being radiate light and leap joyfully in spirit. Let all angelic powers celebrate and honor the holy wonders of the Mother of God and cry out. Hail, most blessed, pure, and ever virgin, Theotorco.
Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and Ever-Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. And to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Aios Kyrios O Theos Simon. Holy is the Lord our God. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. For holy is he. When Mary Magdalene had said that the Lord had been taken, Simon Peter and also Christ, other beloved disciple, both ran to the tomb together. Inside they found the napkin, which had been on the Savior's head, not with the linen cloths that were lying there by themselves, but rolled up and in its own place. So until the Christ appeared to them, they went back home and did rest. Your life was shown to be a rule and standard for monastics and the precise recovery of those grievously fallen, O venerable Pelagia, for escaping the dark night of passions you preceded to Christ the true Son of glory, O stately one, and you shone forth brightly among ascetics. Your splendid memory with theirs we celebrate together. Most holy one, we who have been freed from the ancient curse by your divine birth giving, joyfully hearing the revered archangels greeting to you, thankfully cry out, Hail, redemption of Adam, hail, liberation of Eve, hail through whom all our mortal nature has been deified, hail through whom we have received the heavenly kingdom. and judgment. This is glory for all of his faithful. 
For Christ we praise your saving passion, and we glorify your resurrection. Praise the Lord in his holy places, praise him in the firmament of his strength. You endured the cross, you abolished death, and you who rose from the dead. Bring peace to our lives, for you are almighty. Praise him for his mighty deeds, praise him for the fullness of his majesty. Your resurrection vanquished death and raised up humanity, O oh, Christ. Make us worthy to praise and glorify you with purity of heart. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the harp and the lyre. Glorifying your condescension is benefiting of your divinity, and we praise you, O Christ. You were born of the Virgin, yet you were inseparable from the Father. As man, you suffered and willingly endured the cross. To save the world, you rose from the tomb and came forth as though it were a bridal chamber. Glory be to you. Praise him with timbrel and dance, praise him with strings and pipe. The power of the enemy was put to the death when you were nailed upon the wood of the cross. Creation quaked in fear of you, and Hades was vanquished by your power. You raised the dead from their graves, you opened paradise for the thief. Glory to you. Christ our God. Praise Him with resounding symbols, praise Him with symbols of triumph. Let everything that breathe praise the Lord. Honorable women who were in mourning, hasten to your tomb. They found the tomb open and learned of the new and wondrous miracle from an angel. They told the apostles, the Lord has risen and bestowed upon the world his great mercy. Arise, O Lord my God, lift your mighty hand, forgive not your poor. Christ our God, we worship the sacred wombs of your passion and the royal services on Zion, divinely fulfilled to the end of the ages. O Son of Righteousness, you shone upon those who lay in darkness, guiding them to the light that never wanes. Glory to you, O Lord. I shall praise you, O Lord, with all my heart, and I shall proclaim your mighty deeds. Listen, all you generations, where are they who went to Pilate? The soldiers who kept watch will tell. Where are the seals which secured the tomb? Where is he who was buried to be found? What was the price for him who is priceless? How was the treasure stolen? Why do they impugn the resurrection of the crucified? He is risen. Who knew freedom even among the dead, granting to the world great mercy. The Thoughts that 
God you seek where Jesus was laid. Look at how the disciples who ran together did from the linen and the napkin that he has risen, and then they remembered the scripture concerning these things. Through them we also now do believe, and with them we extol you, O Christ, the giver of life. Virgin Theotokos, for Hades has been taken captive by him who was born of you. Adam was brought back, the curse was abolished, Eve was delivered, death was put to death, and we were given life anew. In praise we cry aloud, blessed are you, O Christ our God, who have shown your good Pleasure, glory to you, our God. You. Holy God, holy mighty, holy 
protect us, O God, by your grace. The memory of your most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious lady, holy, we talk of us in our mercy. All the saints, let us commend ourselves in one another and thou Yeah. 
Let us be attentive. Brethren, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that you may always have enough of everything, and may provide in abundance for every good work. As it is written, He scatters abroad, He gives to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your resources and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for great generosity, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God.
The first is a tragedy. The only son of a widow is dead. The woman has no more support for each of her husbands. The second aspect of the reading is compassion. Jesus stops. He did not know the man. He did not know the woman. It is entirely possible that he was a stranger to everyone present. Yet, he takes the time and he approaches the mother who is suffering in pain, longing already for her son, and comforts her. The third aspect is a miracle. We all love miracles. We all want to see miracles. Jesus resurrects the young man. And then the fourth aspect that I want everyone to take note of, and this is one that we can easily overlook, is the aspect of awe, a fearful awe that overtakes the people present. The last verse of the reading, Luke chapter uh, 7, verse 16, goes like this. It's the one I began with. Fear sees them all. Not fear of a danger to their lives or anything of that sort. It's that fear that is all. And we hear from the crowd two different statements. What are those statements? A great prophet has arisen among us. And then the second one, God has visited his people. Try to remember this. We'll return to it. But first, I want to share with you, brothers and sisters, that many years ago, when I was a newly ordained priest and young man, trying to serve people as the Lord Jesus showed by his example, I struggled greatly with one pastoral matter. You see, I would visit families who experienced a death, especially a tragic death. Or maybe not a death, but they learned of a severe illness in a member of the family. Or maybe not even one of those, but experienced some major brokenness that this world inflicts upon people. And I would be with them. And it hurt. It hurt me to see and learn the pain that they experienced. I began to see and feel that type of suffering and pain, almost personified. It was very scary because I could see that some pain does not actually become healed in this world of ours. By that point, I was well aware of it in my own family with my own mother who lived for more than half her life, three, two-thirds of her life, with a severe illness. And as a young priest and a young man, I just wanted to ease, I wanted to soothe and comfort the suffering of people, and I could not. I could not take away the pain and suffering of those who mourn the loss of a loved one, or the experience of constant pain and constant worry of oncoming death. No matter how much I prayed, how much I fasted, how many sacraments I served, 
how much I read the Bible or the lives of miracle-working saints, I simply could not stop it. In my youthfulness and immaturity, and perhaps also due to unintentional pride, I was expecting miracles. I was expecting miracles to be the result of my prayers and my ministry. And that has never been the case. No miraculous healing ever came from any of my work. And I don't expect that any will. However, in time, with age, I noticed that a certain minute healing was taking place as the result of my prayers, my ministry, and oftentimes simply my presence. Noticing that, I began to work on ways by which I can perhaps sustain the ongoing minute healing that was coming and entering the lives of families. And that I could grasp. But this type of healing was only of moments. Moments of deep suffering which all of a sudden felt the presence of the Holy Spirit with a sense of comfort or peace or a greater understanding of the depth of pain that people felt. And I could not stop. In these moments of healing, have become my focus and attention in ways, means, statements, actions, programs that can sustain the return of these moments of healing. Let's return to that verse that I began with. There are two exclamations that I pointed out to you. And I, the first one is, a great prophet has risen among us. That's the awe that the people felt. I realized and embraced that my work will never result in the people exclaiming, a great priest has arisen among us. Nor should they. Not with me. But indeed, my work can bring about the realization that truly God has visited his people. The Lord Jesus Christ offered a miracle to very directly and very clearly provide sustenance, provide support, provide care for the woman who was old and a widow and had no other support but her only son. But the lesson for the people there and for you and I today is that the resurrection of an only son is not the point. Indeed, it is only that the presence of you and me in the lives of every single person who suffers, every single person who is lacking, needs to feel that God visits him. And God visits him through you and through me. And yes, that is something that I can do. That is something that I can do as a priest. But brothers and sisters, 
the fact that I'm a priest is irrelevant. The only reason why we have the ordained priesthood in the church, the only reason I wear these vestments and people kiss my hand, is so that all of you become those priests who visit people in pain every single day, every single moment where we can bring about moments of healing which we sustain by remaining a presence in the lives of those around us. The church has a term for all of us. It's called the royal priesthood. You are greater priests than I will ever be. You are the ones who bring about the realization of a person sitting next to you today or maybe a stranger you'll never meet that God is indeed real and present and he visits them when they are in great need. Brothers and sisters, moments of sustained healing are a greater miracle than one person rising from the dead. Amen. by your might, we may offer glory to you, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages.
praise the Lord God. Remember all of us in his kingdom, always, now, and forever, and to the ages of ages.
and he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. This kingdom will have no end. And the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, together with the Father and the Son, is worshiped and glorified, who spoke from the prophets, and the one and holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I acknowledge my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I accept the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Let us stand in the right, let us stand in all, let us be attentive, that we may present the holy offering <coughs> with peace. Let us be at peace, a sacrifice of
Once again we offer to you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood. And we beseech and pray and entreat you send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon the gifts here presented. Bless, Master, the holy bread. And may this bread, the precious body of your Christ. Amen. Amen. Bless, Master, the holy cup. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Amen. Bless, Master, both the holy gifts. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. And grant us, Master, with boldness and without condemnation to dare call you the heavenly God, Father and to serve. Cold that sears the unworthy, the 
body of God will deify us in emergency. It deifies the spirit and the Lord of sweet nourishes the mind. You know, sweet me with your name of Christ, and by your divine arrows still change me. But burn up our sins in spiritual fire, and grant me to be filled with delight in you, so that even your joy and I magnify, O good one, your two comings. How shall I, O unworthy, enter into the sun of your saints? If I dare to enter into the bridal chamber, my holy will accuse me, since I saw the wedding garment, and being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation, because of my unworthiness, but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body. Properly anymore. 
Yup. Something happens in there, in the head. I don't know what happens. But something happens and we don't think properly anymore. And sometimes, you know what? Our hearts start to like things that we shouldn't even like. Yeah. That's what we learned from Saint Pelagia. She was an actress. And she became very famous, very popular. Everybody liked her. Everybody knew her name. But she realized that she was making the wrong decisions. She was becoming involved in some bad things. She was hurting people and even hurting herself. Yeah. Do you think she was happy about that? No, you're right. When she realized that she was doing some really bad things and hurting other people around her and hurting herself too, she stopped. And then she went and prayed alone for God to forgive her and for God to show himself to all people who become famous so that they stay. I got a word for you, it starts with age. Humble. You know what the word humble means? You do? John what's me. You, you give from yourself. That's one thing that humble means. What else? Oh, you think about others, not so much about yourself. What else? What's that? You, oh, you're pretty squished? Well, you can move back. Let's move back. Is that what you put your hand up the whole time for? I'm sorry. <laughs> So, you know what else you need to be humble? You want to tell me? You give people what they need when they don't have what they need. But more importantly than anything, it means to not think of yourself too much or that you are too big or too famous or too smart or too strong or too rich, or anything like that. You see, Saint Pelagia was very proud of herself. She was proud that she was so famous. And when she realized that by her pride she became a bad person, she humbled herself. She became humble. And then she was helping to heal all kinds of people around her. Are you going to remember the story of Saint Pelagia? Maybe, maybe not. I didn't tell it so well, did I? No, I'm sorry. But you know what? It's okay if you forget, because we can learn it again next year, right? I'm just happy that you're here now. And you're going to remember that H word though, aren't you? What's that H word? Humble. Well, that's good. As long as you remember, humble. Very good, kids. Thank you. God bless you. Now, please listen to the ushers. And they'll tell you where to go. And remember, we let the Sunday school teachers go first. Okay? Shining stars, praise Him, your highest heavens. 
Blessed is the offering of your servant in your holy church, always, now, and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. He can read. will be good. Thank you for coming to the Divine Liturgy today. May the Lord God receive our worship this Sunday morning. It's wonderful to see all of you here. A um, couple of quick announcements. Father Jason is away, as most of you know. We've got a fantastic family camp this year with about 200 people. It's uh, the largest we've had in a long time, so glory be to God. And um, we, uh, Father Paul Kalina, is uh, busy with uh, travels, and we're very blessed to have with us Father Paul Hodge, who is the president yes, of our Father clergy Paul brotherhood Lord. in Minnesota. I believe almost many people already know yes, Father Paul. Read out Thank you, Father Paul, for liturgizing with us. Um, you can go ahead and start. Missions and outreach lunch will take place next Sunday. Open up your bulletins and you'll see the information with greater detail about it. Please be sure to join in. For, uh, for the luncheon and especially for the pre presentation of our missionaries, uh, the Jones family, who serve as missionaries abroad. You also have in your bulletin a whole sheet that describes a new ministry that we are starting in our parish, specifically designated for girls. And this will be entitled... St. Olympia right. after the famous right deaconess right. and yep. we want to encourage all of you to come and uh, uh, participate, all young uh, girls to come and participate and uh, uh, next, not, is it next Sunday? Next Sunday there's going to be an informational about it um, uh, and uh, we invite all of you to, uh, to join in and we encourage all the young girls to participate. The last uh, announcement that I'll have for you today is to remind you that, um, to remind you, as you perhaps already know, that we have on Sunday, October 29th, on Sunday, October 29th, we will have our fall parish assembly. And this is going to be a very important assembly for a number of reasons. First of all, a reminder, this is when we approve the budget for next year. So if you want to make sure that my salary stays as low as possible, <laughs> be sure to come on Sunday the 29th. There's no other way to make sure of that. And uh, in addition uh, to that, we will have a couple of uh, wonderful, wonderful and uh, uh, fruitful announcements of information for all of you. Adults, please set time aside. On that Sunday, to make sure we keep you here, we will have a fantastic, uh, fantastic brunch that will be put on by the Sunday school, by the Sunday school parents, and, uh, and I hope and pray that you'll come at least to eat as you listen to everything else that's going on. Um, but, on this Sunday, I have, and I was rushing through the other announcements for this specific reason. Churches are impacted by every single person who walks in through the door. Churches are impacted by the prayers in ways that we don't even realize. They're impacted by the prayers of even one person who passes through one time in his or her life. But, in a very practical sense, churches are impacted by the people who tire week after week to offer the ministry of the church, the work of Christ's hands in the world, to all of you. And at the helm of all of that work stands, for us as Orthodox Christians, the worship of the church. Every time you come in, and every time you have come in, for some of you it's been decades, week after week. For the past 43 years, you have been deeply enriched by the ministry of Vespina Macris as the music director of our parish. <clears throat> 
along with her husband, Mark Macris, who has served as organist. The two of them have beautified the worship of the church right here in this place for decades. Despina and Mark, thank you. May the Lord God bless them with good. May the Lord God bless you with good health for many years, with great joy, with great peace, and spiritual satisfaction for how you have built up people toward the kingdom of heaven. I am making this announcement because in as much as I wanted to force Despina to come and make it, she refused. Um, at the end of this year, this will be the mark of, this will be the mark, really the end of an era, but re in truth, the beginning of eternity, because churches are built for the second coming of Christ. And in providing ministry to this parish, the two of them, have beautified the worship and have provided worship for you longer than any priest who is alive who has served this community. Just goes to show that priests, like I said in the sermon, are not nearly as important as you are. Um, Part of the announcement on October 29th will be the announcement of an expanded music ministry with uh, a, a bit of a new setup that all of you will be able to, uh, to learn about. Um, please be sure. Oh, just so you know, again, against her will, there will be a Sunday uh, in, the next, uh, in the next three, four months that we will dedicate to Despina and Mark when we will have a, a special Sunday dedicated to their ministry to honor them against their will. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive that Sunday in the morning myself to pick no, them up. No, if that's they, good. Thank you. If they Thank make you. a fuss. Okay. 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 Um, yep. That's it. Thank you. Please be sure to thank them, to embrace them, to give them your love as you have for many years. And <clears throat> above all, respect. to keep them in your prayers. Okay. As souls who have guided you in worship. Please approach for the Antidoron. Christ is in our midst. Since it passes away and instead look after the soul since it is immortal and therefore O divine Pelagia your spirit rejoices with the angels in your mother is preserved undistorted what was made in the image of god for taking up the cross you followed christ and by example taught that we should overlook the flesh since it passes away and instead look after the soul since it is immortal and therefore o oh, divine 
Lord Pelagia, your spirit rejoices with the angels.